On today's show, she's one fourth of the Fabulous Four from Detroit, Michigan. Please welcome back the WOW world champion, Penelope Pink. That's right. You got the absolute WOW factor right here. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Mike Grand Show. And today's special guest is the WOW World Champion. Please welcome back, Penelope Pink. Hey Penelope, how are you? I'm great, thank you so much for having me back. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to have you back here today. And before we get started, I just wanna let everybody know what a great show WOW Women of Wrestling is putting on this weekend. I just want to go through some of the matches that we have in store for you viewers. It's the return of the beast. She's going to take on Chainsaw with Angelica Dante in her corner. Plus, Jesse Jones and Americana are going to try to get revenge against Exodus and Genesis. Plus, also in action will be Tiki Chamorro as she battles G.I. Jane with Samantha Smart in her corner. And the main event is you, Penelope. You're going to defend the WOW World Championship against not one, but two competitors, Princess Aussie and Tormenta with Sofia Lopez in her corner. That's all this weekend on WOW. And we're going to be talking about that match a little bit later on. But first, I just want to congratulate you because it's almost one year that you've been WOW World Champion. Can you believe it? Oh, I can. And this is just the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like first milestone, and then you just keep going from there. Yep, it's pretty crazy. I mean, has this year gone by super fast for you? Did, have you had time to enjoy the ride? Oh, absolutely. I mean, anytime me and the Fab Four have an opportunity to celebrate, we're going to celebrate as much as humanly possible. But the view at the top of the mountain is gorgeous. We just got to, you know, keep batting everybody off. So has it been everything that you um, anticipated and hoped for being the WOW World Champion? Absolutely. I mean, when you have the best prize, everybody's gunning for you. You have a target on your back 24-7, but I thrive under competition and pressure. I welcome it because, you know, like I said, I don't call myself the best damn thing that WOW's ever seen for my health. You know, I truly am. So I, I love it. I live for it. And I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Thanks to Lana Starr. Now, the last time you were here, you were in a four-woman match where it was the Fab Four, you, Vicky Lynn McCoy, and um, Miami Sweet Heat, and you guys were battling the Island Dynasty, the Tonga Twins, Tiki Chamorro, and Leia Makoa. Now, that match didn't take place yet. We were discussing it. Now, you had mentioned to me when I asked you what your game plan was that weekend you said, you know, you guys are an established team, the four of you, and those four were kind of just put together. However, unfortunately for you guys, they picked up that win. So I want to know what happened that weekend. Well, you know what? I feel like, what is it saying? Every dog has their day. But guess what? I have single-handedly picked off Leia and Tiki, and they just you know, were tossed away by me. And you know what? The Tonga twins had to resort to using weapons recently against Miami Sweet Heat. So when the odds are stacked against them, they have to find a harder way to get hit. They have to find the harder way to put us down. But you know what? What goes around comes around. You can't count any of us out yet. Did that loss in any way make you guys reassess your strategy going forward against the Island Dynasty, knowing that they were able to pick up a win against you guys? I would say we just kind of regrouped and recollected. So, yes, I guess we kind of just kind of got together and realized. Um, unfortunately, the Tonga Twins have figured out a system where they have to hit 
a single move using both of them. You know what I mean? They have to use that finishing move on Vicky. They use both of them. Where if it was me in the ring, which I wasn't because I was both outside with Leia and Tiki because they knew they had to eliminate me to get in there. So they used their strategy wise, wisely, you know, but we have Lana Starr, the smartest of them all. Yep. And now you were able to rebound because then Tiki Tomorrow challenged you for the title and had a title opportunity, but you easily beat Tiki. So can you just tell us a little bit about that match and what it was like wrestling against Tiki? Absolutely. You know, I had to say I had to send the little munchkin back to Oz, but she is a dynamo. She comes at you with everything she's got. So don't ever, you know... I didn't take her lightly because she really brought it. But at the same time, when you're the caliber of the WOW world champion, she's just not there yet. One day, but you always have the game plan up here ready. And another person that you battled for the WOW world championship was Candy Crush. She was really excited that David McLean had given her an opportunity. And it was sort of like pink against pink because, you know, she's got that pink going on there just like you you know but you came out on top and you defended the championship I want to know two things one what it was like obviously wrestling Candy Crush and do you think Candy Crush is somebody that you could possibly have you know come into your faction one day with 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 all her love of the color pink is that is that possible or no way actually no way like I feel like you know, we need to draft up a petition and maybe give it to Sophia Lopez about maybe getting her not to wear the pink anymore because it's kind of annoying, to be honest with you. But yeah, in the match with Candy Crush, let's be honest, it was obvious what the target would be all along. That boxing hand. I just had to take that out. You take out the weapon, her assault, you take out Candy Crush. And that's what I did. I made sure that there was no way that she could throw that last punch. And she wasn't ready for that. Yep. And then she did have to go and recruit Princess Aussie to team up with her. And she battled you and Vicky Lynn McCoy in a tag team match. And unfortunately there, something very bad happened at the end of that match where you somehow got pinned. Now we need to know what happened here. Absolutely. I can tell you exactly what happened. And uh, so can the paramedics backstage because I got elbowed right in the ear and my ear actually started bleeding and it was a distraction and it was a weekend, weekend moment of myself. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. Obviously, you know, I'm usually very in my own headspace and manicured and very prepared. And it just so happened that at that time, point and place, I got rocked and I wasn't ready but, you know, I'm not a tag specialist. I'm a single specialist. So if I was mentally prepared better for a singles match, a title defense, I'm always more prepared for that. She just caught me off guard for a split second. But we've learned that doesn't happen twice. Yep. Now, Princess Aussie, she has shown a lot more confidence in the ring lately. And she challenged you to the WOW World Championship. And in that match, you know, she put on a great performance. Now, I want to know, do you think Princess Aussie is someone who's kind of been overlooked and underestimated this whole time? Well, I feel like any time a professional wrestler steps foot in the ring, that is your time to shine. You have to show your ability. You have to show who you are and why people should care about you. Why, what talent you possesses, you possess, you know, and you sometimes only get one opportunity to make a good, you know, good first impression. Sometimes you get only one chance at a wow world title. Sometimes you only get one chance and you really got to put everything into that. So if she's been overlooked, you know what? It's her journey. It's her path. It's up to you as the athlete to prove why you shouldn't be. I mean, I know I have shown the world why I am the best. Now, do you think in that match, Lana Starr was a little worried because she did clutch the belt. She held that to her very closely during that match. Why was Lana clutching that belt? I mean, who wouldn't want to hold that belt? Honestly, just, it's just so beautiful. 
you know, Lana held that belt for a long time too. You know, I just think maybe she was making sure, you know, it was also over there by David McLean. So maybe she was just like, ugh, he's getting his stank all over it. You know what I'm saying? She just wanted to rub it for good luck, which we don't even need, but you never know. Doesn't hurt. Little superstition, I guess. Now, Aussie demanded a rematch. I mean, she kind of, of thinks, she, she <laughs> kind of thinks that you cheated. So what, what do you, what do you have to say to that? I gotta say winning's winning. You know, I think Vin Diesel said that we either win by an inch or a mile winning's winning and you know, don't hate the player, hate the game. You don't want to know, talk about cheating. I went through a brutal main event to then just get attacked. I mean, you want to talk about cheating. I mean, after probably the match of the season by my, by me, you know, just come out there and just get blindsided. And also Lana got hurt, which is unacceptable. Yes, you were attacked at the end of the match by the Beast. So what are your thoughts on the Beast coming back and doing that horrendous attack on you two? <laughs> Why are you so obsessed with me? That's what I got to say. Uh, you know, we probably haven't formally met. You know, we really haven't crossed paths. You know, she was out. So I don't know, whatever. She's got her own thing going on. I don't know why she's obsessed with me. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a jealousy? You know what I'm saying? Back of the line. I don't care what you think. I don't care if you never lost. You also never beat me. So. Yep. Now she, she is coming back and somebody did attack her. We still haven't found out who her attacker was. And I want to know your thoughts on that. If you have any idea who her attacker was and could it have possibly been somebody from the Fab Four, maybe the enforcer, Vicky Lynn McCoy? Who, who, who could have attacked the beast? Do you have any clue? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Los Angeles is a crazy place. You have no idea what could be going on in a dark parking garage somewhere, wherever she was. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, things are crazy. I mean, she's, you know, she's the beast. She's tough. You know, she should have her head on a swivel at all times. You know, you know, I was born and raised in Detroit. You know, I'm prepared for anything at all times. So, you know what? She's just got to be more prepared. Yep, and, and we have a great season coming forward here with WOW. Um, your first match of the season as well for your title, Chantilly Chella had an opportunity too um, to battle you. So what was it like going up against Chantilly Chella? Yeah, that was our second meeting, me and Chantilly. And uh, she is definitely, uh, you know, very, she's a dynamo. You know, she's a demand, she's, she's a force to be in that ring with. She throws, you know, very strong strikes and kicks and, you know, always wants to shine and shimmer and dance. But, you know, you just have to be more prepared when you're in the ring with someone with a lot of experience and then can kind of hit you from anywhere you come from. Uh, I I enjoyed putting myself to the test in there with her. I have to say, I really enjoyed being in there with someone who's going to challenge me. But at the same time, the result's always going to be the same. The party was over, Chantilly. Sorry. Yep, coming to the ring, throwing David McLean that cape that he seems to like so much. Oh, I'm so I, upset. I, I mean, could that have some sort of influence on the decision of the match, do you think? And then what's going on with the referee sometimes? I, I met, Maybe he goes to Coachella with her. I don't know, but it seems suspicious. Yep, it, it really does. And what's a little suspicious, too, is let's talk about this weekend now. I mean, they're giving you two opponents. Now, we know that you can handle two, but what is up with that? Because... It's going to be three of you in the ring, which means you don't even have to be pinned to lose the title. So what are your thoughts on this? I know it's ridiculous. I mean, the odds are really stacked against me. But at the same time, I know Lana Starr wouldn't put me in any kind of position to be in peril. And let's be honest, she would never think it was a challenge anyway. But to be honest, Tormenta is somebody I do not have history with, but I know Lon and Sophia have gotten to know each other here recently, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I am always going to be prepared, despite the odds being stacked against me, like you said. But Princess Aussie, she's learned what it's like to be up against me. And Tormenta is a different kind of worker, you know, being a luchadora and working in Mexico. She has a lot of experience, so it will be very interesting to get in the ring for the first time with her. Yes, and, and down in Mexico, you know, Sofia Lopez has told us that Tormenta's won many titles down there. 
but she hasn't won any titles here yet. She hasn't won the WoW World Championship. Um, how do you think Tormenta is going to approach this match, knowing that it's a, it's a title match? Well, I believe Tormenta, much like myself, really listens to her manager. I mean, well, not. I mean, she's the greatest attorney of all time. Let's be honest. She's not going to be giving out bad advice. So I believe she's going to do the smart thing and listen to whatever it is Sophia has to say. Now, will Lana be there at ringside for this match or other members of the Fab Four? Or is that not going to take place because there's so many people? Is David going to try to bar them from ringside or something? Or do you think they're going to be allowed to be there? Well, Lana should be with me. I mean, the Fab Four, we got business to handle. So, you know, Miami Sweet Heat might have something else going on. So, you know, if David's going to go out of his way to try to mess and wedge his way into the Fab Four business, per usual, there will be some repercussions. Now, unfortunately, we said a little bit earlier how the Tonga Twins um, defeated Miami Sweet Heat. So Miami Sweet Heat are not the tag team champions anymore. Now, do you feel any pressure going into this match knowing that you're the only one now from the Fab Four who has a title and to hold on to that title? I feel pressure every day, whether it's in a match or not, because I want to hold myself to the highest standard humanly possible, not only for the Fabulous Four, but for the Lana Star show. You know, WOW is going to be presented in the best light because I am the champion and I'm going to make sure I do it to the best of my ability. So there's pressure always, whether it's in a match, in an interview, anything there is, I'm going to be having the pressure on me. But I love it, you know, and... Because the Tonga Twins had to, you know, take the easy way out and go for weapons and tables and chairs and everything like that to get the better of Lindsay and Lori. Don't worry. When those two heal up and they get ready, they're 100%. You know, they might have to go against a few tag teams, get a little warmed up. You know what I'm saying? But when they're 100% and they know that they're ready, those tag belts will be right around their waist again. Now, has David McLean kind of been avoiding Miami Sweet Heat so that they don't get that rematch to kind of keep it on the Tonga Twins? Have you heard anything from Lana with any negotiations for a rematch of if that's going to be taking place? Oh, 1000%. This is going to have to take place. There's no other way around it. I mean, David can sit there and try to, you know, that's why in my match with Chantilly, of course, Sweet Heat was on commentary. I mean, they didn't want to go to sit there and listen to David's voice. They were there for business. That's what the Fab Four is about, making money and looking good. Now, looking onto the future, you already have the, the WOW World Championship. Do you have any aspirations to hold the Tag Team Championship, maybe with Vicky Lynn McCoy? And if so, will that cause any tension with Miami Sweet Heat? You know, I am so happy being the WOW World Champion, but I am not opposed to maybe holding two championships at one time. I mean, I would not say no, but to be honest, Lana's choice is Lana's choice. And whatever it is, we're going to go out there and take care of business. So whatever it is that Lana needs us to handle, we will go out there and handle the business the fabulous four way. And there is no harsh feelings because at the end of the day, we're all sisters. If one of us wins, we're all winning. Now, I've noticed he's still been avoiding that Fabulous Four appreciation night. He never <laughs> gave you ladies a celebration. Nothing ever happened. So I got to know, how did you celebrate as far as splurging on yourself or buying a gift for yourself? Did you do something special just for yourself? Because I know that you you all went out and celebrated, but you personally did you go and buy something or anything once you were champion just to, you know, as a gift to yourself? Well, to be honest, I go out and shop quite often. So it probably wasn't different than any other normal kind of shopping spree. But to be honest, having that moment meant more to me. Holding that title, having it around my waist when that moment happened, that meant more than a fabulous bag that I could buy, to be honest with you. And now, speaking of shopping, pretty soon, you know, we always, everybody's got to go to the grocery store, right? So pretty mm -hmm. soon, you're going to have to buy some Halloween candy for the trick-or-treaters. 
because Ooh. Halloween is around the corner. It's, it's just a few weeks away, but it's actually almost here. So what I want to do is play a little game with you today called Trick or Treat. And here's how it's going to work. I'm going to name a candy bar. So we're, we're going to test your sweet tooth today. See what, which candy you like. <laughs> All right. So if it, if you don't like the candy, it's a trick because okay. you, you know, you don't want it. Otherwise the candy's a treat. So I'm going to name you some candies and you tell me if this is a trick or a treat. Okay. Snickers. A trick. Oh, you don't like Snickers? Keep. <gasps> Nuts out of my candy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Candy corn. Trick. Yeah. I like to decorate with candy corn. Yeah. Who really likes getting candy corn? Do you think anybody really likes getting candy corn? I don't know. I like to decorate with it, but it's got a very particular taste. That's for sure. Yep. Reese's peanut butter cups. Treat. Definitely. I think those are the best. Right? Right. I have a friend who his daughter um, is allergic to peanut butter. And I'm oh, like, no. oh, how that would be terrible. Heartbreaking. Allergic to peanut butter. Milky Way. Treat. Butterfinger. Treat. Three Musketeers. Treat. Skittles. Treat. Nestle's Crunch Bars. Treat. Twix. Treat. Now, did you even know that there were two two Nestle, I mean, um, I'm sorry, with the Twix, the two sides of the Twix? Did you ever really I mean, look at that? they're the same. <laughs> right? Didn't you think they were the same all this time, even though there's yeah. all the commercials, that there's a left Twix and a right Twix? One with I the caramel. I think they're just pulling and, your leg. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm going to have to check. I never check, you know? I, I always forget about that. Kit Kats. Treat. Almond Joy. That's the only one because I love <laughs> coconut. <laughs> Nerds. I don't know if they still make those. Oh, yeah. Treat. Okay. And then these two aren't candies, but caramel apples. Treat. And if you go to that house and they give you that bowl of pennies. Oh, no. That's a trick. <laughs> You're going to have to scoop them all up as much to try to get that quarter full. In yeah. There. I'd be like, you need this more than I do. I'll just leave this here. Yeah, might as well, you know? <laughs> all right. And now it is time to play the lightning round. I'm going right. to ask you a couple things and you tell me which one you prefer. Okay. On your popcorn, would you want more salt or more butter? Butter. Field hockey or ice hockey? Ice hockey. Would you rather eat carrot sticks or celery sticks? Celery. Would you rather be clever or driven? Driven. Would you rather be poor and happy or rich and miserable? I guess poor and happy because I guess you'd have to be happy, but I'm already have so much stuff. So it's hard to say. <laughs> Do you usually plan things or are you a spontaneous person? Oh, plan. What's worse? You can't stop sneezing or you can't stop hiccuping? Oh, probably <laughs> hiccups. Would you rather be the underdog or the crowd favorite? Probably crowd favorite. Forks and spoons or use a spork? Forks and spoons. Which do you tend to lose more? Your keys or your phone? Phone, always. <laughs> Which is worse? Having false hope or irrational anxiety? Probably anxiety. And if you could only keep one, would it be the private jet or the mansion in Beverly Hills? Oh, the jet, because I'll just go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. Can you say, um, let the fans know how they can keep up with you on social media? And do you have anything you want to say to the fans today? 
Absolutely. I'll just say, please keep watching myself and the Fabulous Four on WOW Women of Wrestling. We are doing incredible things. We get up to you don't even want to know what. You just have to tune in to see. We get in all sorts of shenanigans. You got to keep up with us. WOW Women of Wrestling, we're breaking through ceilings and you just got to tune in. And you can follow me at Penelope Pink Wow on Instagram and Twitter. Yep. And you guys can follow me at official Mike Rand on Facebook and Instagram and at Mike Rand.com on X, formerly Twitter. That's oh, just- yeah. I said Twitter. Whatever. Yeah, that, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be doing that forever. Yeah. The website's MikeRand.com and YouTube.com slash the Mike Rand and at official Mike Rand. Once again, thank you for joining us here today. And thank you guys for watching. And we will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.